Hello, this is Grant Cardone with my non-negotiable financial advice. Why buy it? These are 15 pieces of advice that I've used over the past 45 years to create the wealth I have. Keep in mind that I started with no money, no contacts, and no debt, building several very successful businesses. These 15 financial tips I'm about to share with you are tough and harsh and will make you uncomfortable, but if you follow them, I promise you will create wealth for yourself. Two new videos are published every day, so to not miss out on valuable knowledge for your success, I strongly advise you to subscribe to this humble channel. Take the opportunity to like this video and leave a comment, as it also helps in spreading this content. Now let's continue with the main topic. Never spend more than you and your family earn. That's rule number one. Never spend more than you earn. I've been doing this since I was 25. If I don't have it, I don't spend it. If I earn $2,000, I don't spend more than $2,000. Never spend more than you earn and never count on money before you have it. Just because you made a big sale doesn't mean the money is in your hands. Don't spend that money and don't delude yourself. Rule two, if you can't afford it, don't buy it. These rules are for those who are starting out. Once you build wealth and become super rich, like Elon Musk, Bill Gates, do whatever you want. But this is for those who are starting out. If you can't afford it, don't buy it. Let's say you want to buy a small truck. Then, I would lease that truck for 24 months instead of buying it. If it were the case with a lease contract, rather than simply owning the vehicle. Rule 3. Know exactly how much your lifestyle costs. It's surprising how many people have no idea how much money they make how much they pay in taxes, how much they pay in mortgage, car insurance, electricity, water, utilities, spend on their children, eating out, Uber, and so on. If you don't know, you can't control what you're doing. So the first thing you should do is know exactly where every penny you and your family receive is going. How much your wife spends, how much you spend, how much gasoline costs, oil, tires, calculate everything. If you simply take the last 90 days, review your bank statement and your credit card bills and add it all up, you will operate your cost of living. Divide that by three and that will be the monthly cost of your lifestyle. You need to know down to the last penny. Know exactly how much it costs to live so you can start controlling it and then surpass it. Rule four, never lend money. Never lend money to anyone. Listen closely, you're not a bank, you're not an ATM, you're not a credit card. Your name isn't MasterCard. You need to earn money, take care of your family, take care of your business, strengthen your wealth. And even then, you wouldn't lend money to anyone, especially friends and family. Don't do it. I'm serious. You won't solve your financial problems, you'll just get involved in their financial problems. So, I've never done this, only once in literally 30 years and I was disappointed. Never lend money to anyone. If they can't get money from a bank, they shouldn't be able to get money from you. Rule 5. If it doesn't generate cash flow, I say no. Invest only in assets that generate cash flow. Right now, I get a lot of hate for this because it excludes buying a house. You shouldn't buy a house because the house doesn't generate cash flow. When you buy a house with a 30-year mortgage, you are the one generating the cash flow, not the house. That's why I say to initially invest in things that generate cash flow. Instead of buying a car that doesn't generate cash flow, why not buy a car that you can rent out to other people and thus generate cash flow? So, I would say yes, buy the car. If you want to buy an apartment building that generates cash flow and live in one of the units for free, great. That generates cash flow. Do you want to live in a house that you need to feed and pay mortgage, interest, maintenance, property taxes, and broker fees? Don't do that. That doesn't generate cash flow. If it doesn't generate cash flow, I say no. Rule 6. Never gamble with money. Unless you're sure you're going to win. Luck may smile on you tonight, but don't gamble with money. Stop betting on the stock market. Stop betting on NFTs. Stop betting on cryptocurrencies. Stop going to casinos. Don't put a coin in a prize machine. Oh, it's just a coin. Look, that's just a coin. You'll never get rich if you use the words just or not much before any financial amount. You'll never have money because you're not taking it seriously. Never gamble with your money. Just don't gamble. Rule 7. Limit your spending. Still passive. 
Limit all discretionary spending. Still passive. This means discretionary spending is those you absolutely don't need to have. These are things that aren't on a scale of 1 to 5. Maybe there are 3, 4, or 5. The firsts and the seconds you don't need to have. The thirds, maybe. The fourths, not necessary. The fifths are nonsense. Discretionary spending should only be done with passive income. Still passive is not the income you earn by trading your time, but rather the investment in something that continues to pay. Only in that case would I buy the private jet, the watch, the bracelet, the necklace, with the passive income generated by an investment, and not earn it by trading time. Rule 8. Pay credit card bills every 30 days. Credit card bills should be paid every month. It's worth mentioning that Visa, MasterCard, and American Express are good for one thing. They act as my little free accounting program. I use my credit card for everything, so I can track my expenses. At the end of 30 days, I pay. I don't know how many years it's been since I've had credit cards, but I bet the total amount of interest I've paid to American Express, Visa, and MasterCard, on which I've spent millions of dollars, doesn't even reach $1,000 in 40 years. Believe it or not, that's because I pay everything off. The only time we pay interest is when someone forgets to pay within the first 30 days, but that's rare. Pay your credit card bills every month, don't leave them, or pay partially. Rule 9. Hold off on buying instead of purchasing. Hold off and hold off until you have a lot of money, until you're super wealthy. I'm telling you, hold off and hold off. Don't buy. You don't need to be the owner. Use the rental car. Use everything you can without the obligation of ownership. Don't commit to a 20 or 30 year mortgage or a seven year loan when you can simply make a 24 month lease agreement for equipment. It's much better. Look at all the banks. Wells Fargo doesn't own any movable property. Bank of America doesn't own any property either. Most of these companies aren't owners, they lease. JP Morgan leases most of the properties it has in New York City. Who do you think he's competing with? I have a building of my own at home because you think that way. Lease and earn income until you have massive wealth, and even then, you might want to continue leasing. Rule 10. Stop buying things. I want to rent and lease. Stop accumulating things and start accumulating assets. This is a game of assets, not possessions. You have your watches and spoons and all your gold and glitter. You're accumulating glitter, and I'm accumulating assets. I'm investing in real estate that generates cash flow, while you're buying bags that deteriorate. So, acquire assets, not things. Also, for your children, stop buying games and start establishing real estate investments for them. Because they will outgrow your games and plastic toys and grow up having appreciating assets that will provide them income while they wait. This will give them appreciation and benefits, both for them and your family. So, when your children are 15, 16, 17, and 18, they won't have memories of childhood, but assets because you made the right decisions while they were still children. Rule 11. Don't allow allowances. Stop giving allowances to your children. Your children don't deserve an allowance, they deserve an opportunity to work for you and then get paid. My kids have never received an allowance in their lives. They don't know what the word allowance means. They work, and we pay. We have a contract with both kids. Once a year, we pay, and then according to the contract, they have to fulfill a certain amount of tasks and responsibilities for the money to be valid. In the contract, that money is tax deductible for me. I can deduct it because they won't improve just by getting an allowance. No one improves just because they receive an allowance. You improve when you work. I'm teaching my kids how to work, how to control their assets, how to control their capital, and never use it or touch it. I'm showing long-term value of how money appreciates when invested, and they need to learn how to start the cash flow. Stop giving allowances to your children. Pay them for working. It could be taking out the trash. It could be giving hugs. Teach a child to hug, teach to love, teach to work. Rule 12. Never mix business accounts with personal accounts. Never mix those accounts. When I use a credit card, my American Express may be the business card and Visa may be my personal card. So, at the end of the year or in an audit, the IRS will ask why this went to the business. Everything on this card is for the business and everything here is personal, but never mix those two accounts. 
Don't mix personal with business. When I receive money from the business, I put it into my personal account. I don't take money from my personal account and put it back into the business. Rule 13. Keep accounts separate. Keep accounts separate, even when you're married. Those who are simply living together should definitely keep separate accounts. There's no reason to mix your accounts, even when you're married. There's no reason to do so. Each person should be responsible for themselves. You have this amount of money, I have this amount of money. If you're sharing business money or sharing how you pay for things, have separate accounts. My wife and I have separate accounts. It's not because I don't trust her, it's because I trust her. I trust that she will take care of her money and manage it. We take care of things, we know how to divide them, but we have separate accounts. This will also protect those who live with someone irresponsible. And we know that happens. One person is very responsible, and the other doesn't pay attention. When they have separate accounts, both people have to pay attention. Sooner or later, the irresponsible person will run out of money in their account, and the other person, the responsible one, will be unaffected. And what you want to find out in this situation is who is being who needs to be corrected, who needs to be held accountable to be able to resolve the situation. Rule 14. If you're doing business with someone and they don't talk about their finances, run as fast as you can. If you're going to do business with someone, invest money in someone's business, invest money in a project, invest money in real estate, and they don't show how their personal finances are, their business finances, if they don't show their bank accounts, their bankruptcy history, their money accounts, their investment accounts, their earnings, I'm telling you, run as fast as you can. Every acronym company knows everything you already have. So, don't fool yourself. I can't share this, it's personal. Because you can't share. If you want to do business with me, share with me where you have your money. If you're applying for a loan, the bank will know everything about that person. It will know all the little details, from spending problems to issues. Those who are starting relationships with people, ladies, before going to bed with someone, know what their financial situation is. If they don't show you, move on. Rule 15. Avoid people with financial problems. Avoid all people who have financial problems. Stay away from them as if they were a plague. They have a problem, and that problem is contagious. Their financial problems will turn into your financial problems. Let them solve them if they can, and then come back. And I know you're going to say, good for you, it's all about money. That's why they're called non-negotiable financial advice. It's about money. I'm distancing myself from people who have financial problems, your true friend. Am I going through problems right now? Why would I want to bring my problems to you? Stay away from people who have financial problems. These are my non-negotiable financial advices. Look, I started from nothing. If you don't know who I am, I literally started from scratch at 25. I had no money, no credit, no finances, no mentor, no training, no financial education. I knew nothing about it. I only knew one thing. I wanted more than what I had. So, I started studying and reading every finance book I could, meeting all these rich people. And once I read that book, The Millionaire Next Door, a million dollars is not enough money for you. It's not enough money for your future. It's not enough money for your security. And it definitely isn't enough money for your retirement. These financial advices have put me in a position that for the past 30 years has allowed me to truly understand the money game. How to need it, how to manage it, who to do business with, how to create real wealth, how to generate passive income, how to avoid the tax burden. All of this so I can take care of the people around me. It's not about donations, but about taking care of myself and the people around me and providing stability for others. Money won't make you happy, but it will pay for everything. If you want more money, follow these financial advices, and I promise if you stay disciplined, turn them into a code for you and your family, I promise you will create the wealth you deserve. I hope you have enjoyed and absorbed these non-negotiable financial advices. If you are committed to transforming your financial life, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to receive more valuable content like this. Share your experiences in the comments below. I want to know how these tips are positively impacting your financial journey. Be part of this community that seeks prosperity and real wealth building. Subscribe now and don't miss the next guidance. Remember, 
Financial success is a continuous journey, and we are here to walk it together. Until the next video.